Shall we listen yeah. to this beautiful piece of pink vinyl? Yeah, drop that needle. Okay, old school. So, Andy, this wasn't the song we had in mind for this Pretty in Pink It film, wasn't even was supposed to be a song. Uh, we, we wrote a totally different song, didn't we? We, we went did. down to Paramount Studios and met John and Molly and John Cryer, and they gave us the script, and we went home we to went England home. and wrote the song for the prom scene where Molly was supposed to end up with Ducky. With Ducky, yeah. But, uh, but th then they, they did a, a testing and um, and the the uh, the people just wanted wanted uh, Molly the teenage to girls the teenage, okay, the wanted teenage girls. Molly to end up with, with the, the pretty boy. boy. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, they they rescripted it and reshot. And, and then, then we got into uh, L.A. didn't we with our with our tape of Goddess of Love, the original song mm -hmm. for the film, to mix it. And then we get this urgent message from John Hughes saying. Um, uh, can you contact us urgently because the song you've got is, is not going to work for the end of the film now. Was and where was our equipment? We were supposed to, we were starting it's a tour somewhere San else. San Francisco. That's right, All so that's why it wasn't to in LA, Frank. so we had yeah. to hire equipment. Yeah. And that, that's the reason why we wrote this in a completely different way to normal, because we didn't use any of the synths or the computers. No. Whilst we were waiting for the rental equipment, you sat at the piano and just started playing chords. And you were scribbling words like but crazy. And old, coming school, up like we old school, we, we, which we never work in. And, All right. In fact, that's the only song ever that yeah. we've written that way, because we usually <laughs> start with mad noises mm -hmm. and crazy ideas, and then the tune goes on last. Yeah. But so, uh, We got yeah. lucky. We got lucky. I think nine times out of ten when you do that, and you're under such pressure, because we had two Two days before the tour started, didn't we? So nine times out of ten, when you do that, yeah. you come up with a piece of crap. But do you remember the next day? Because we, we we did a demo, put onto a cassette, and we set it on a motorcycle to Paramount, like about three in the morning, and we went to bed, and it took ages to get to sleep, and then yeah. you know so what like seemed like two minutes later. We get a phone call at half past eight from our manager saying, oh, John's heard it, he loves, he loves it. it. Go back in the studio and finish it. We're like, <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Out of bed after two hours <laughs> sleep. And um, So that was two days and then we started the tour and then we needed to wait for a day off on tour mm -hmm. to come back, fly back to LA to mix it, didn't That's we? Right. we um, we couldn't get the studio we wanted, so we ended up in Giorgio Moroder's personal That's studio right. mixing it there, didn't yeah, we? Which was pretty cool to which go to Giorgio cool. Moroder's It's a shame studio. he wasn't there, so I'd love to have met that him. Would have, that would have been the icing on the cake. Cool studio. And then, you know, the only parameter for this song was that it had to be 120 beats a minute because yeah. they'd filmed the prom dancing to Don't You Forget About Me. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And when we went to the premiere, which was exciting, you know, limo, red carpet, all the Hollywood pizzazz, we sat there through the whole film waiting on comes the song, nobody's dancing in time to the music. Right, We're like, yeah. what was the point of telling us how, what tempo it had to be at? Nobody, who edited this film? Yeah, you know? I think they changed the edit in the end because we were moaning. Oh, dear. <laughs> Do you remember the video? Yes, we did it on the A&M lot, which was Charlie Chaplin's Charlie Chaplin sound, sound stage. stage. Yeah. And do you also remember going shopping for clothes? Yes. Maxfields, was it? Maxfields, which was so up its own backside, there wasn't a front door. That's right. You had yes, to phone them and they let you in the back door. <laughs> we spent a stupid amount of money, didn't we? Yeah, we spent... Uh, was, was it about $25,000 in half an hour? Than, yeah, something like that. And you look at the video now and I'm looking at the clothes and I'm going, Really? We spent how much on that? <laughs> so, uh, somebody saw, saw us coming. coming. They saw yeah. us coming, yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. And then remember... Because the song originally was over five minutes long and they made us edit and edit and edit. Yeah, because they wouldn't play it, play it as four minutes on the radio, yeah. do you remember? Yeah. It had to be cut down to four minutes. But because of all the key changes that we did, we couldn't find a place to cut it. No. So what did we do? Well, in fact, uh, this bit here that is supposed to not exist because the song is actually 425 and we couldn't cut it shorter yep. but we just wrote on the box 402 and gave it to the label <laughs> before the uh, nobody ever checked there was an extra 23 yeah. seconds on we it. just <laughs> pretended it was four minutes when really it was still 425 and that's that's how you write your biggest hit in north america <laughs> and it served us really well yeah it served us really well i mean you, you know it's even on the tv and commercials still now i saw mm. it on cnn last night you know there's no escape from if you leave <laughs> Thanks for watching Behind the Vinyl. We have got a ton more episodes available to you. Your favorite artists with your favorite stories. And here's the thing, we're updating Behind the Vinyl all the time. So if you want to stay up to date on that, simply subscribe by clicking right up here. And you can do us a huge favor by sharing some Behind the Vinyls on your socials. Thanks.